So, in the last lecture, uh, what we had started doing was what are called loop transformations. Uh, so, uh, I had started initially with uh, a nonlinearity in the k1 infinity sector, and I showed how uh, uh, we can convert that nonlinearity or we can think of that nonlinearity as a nonlinearity in the 0 infinity sector. So, in some way, the k1 infinity sector you expand it out so that it becomes the 0 infinity sector. Okay. So, um, today I will uh, continue with that, but uh, uh, probably I will also revisit the k 1 infinity and, uh, um, and, and sort of um, try and wrap it round nicely. Uh, so, um, uh, maybe what we will do is we will continue with what we were doing in the last lecture that is uh, after we had finished the k 1 infinity sector, we had started looking at the 0 k 2 sector. So, uh, let us think of a nonlinearity in the 0 k 2 sector. So, uh, so we are thinking of a of a nonlinearity which belongs to the 0 k 2 sector. So, what I mean by that is so here xi is the input to the nonlinearity, phi is the output to the nonlinearity, and we have this uh, line which has slope equal to k 2 and uh, what we are saying is that we have a nonlinearity which lies in the 0 k 2 sector. So, it lies something like that that is a nonlinearity. Okay? Now, uh, that nonlinearity of course, uh, one could uh, think of that nonlinearity as phi by psi that means, at any point you take the phi and divide by psi, you get this this particular sort of triangle. And uh, of course, uh, the, the, the slope, the, the tangent of the angle that it subtends is smaller than the angle by the slope k 2. So, this is less than equal to k 2, but it is greater than equal to 0. And then, uh, we could rewrite any, any nonlinearity in the sector by means of a quadratic form. Uh, so, the quadratic form that we could uh, uh, rewrite this as is the following. So, you take k 2 xi, k 2 xi minus phi. So, uh, when you do k 2 xi minus phi, so if I am thinking about this particular psi here, k 2 psi is here and phi is here. So, this quantity here is positive if I on the other hand take a psi which is negative k 2 psi is here, phi is here and so this quantity here is negative. So, um, if I multiply k 2 psi minus phi to psi, I would get something positive, but that is not the quadratic form that I am going to take. What the quadratic form I am going to take is you see phi here corresponding to this negative quantity, the corresponding phi is also negative and here the phi is positive. So, what I am going to do is I am going to take the quadratic form given by k 2 psi minus phi transpose phi and this is going to be greater than or equal to 0 for any nonlinearity that lies in this, this particular sector 0 k 2. Okay. Now, um, so suppose now you have this original nonlinearity and you have the input psi and the output phi. Okay. We want to convert it into a nonlinearity which has as its output, it has exactly the same output as the original nonlinearity, but its input is modified and this new input psi tilde transpose phi greater than or equal to 0, this psi tilde is given by k 2 psi minus phi. Okay. So, how to modify this? So, that the psi tilde becomes k 2 psi minus phi. Okay. So, the way we are going to do it is uh, the following. So, let me put a gain here, which is k 2 inverse. So, if I put a gain here k 2 inverse, then what should have been here 
is k2 times psi. So, k2 psi multiplying k2 inverse will give me psi. Now, I have to get this k2 psi and so what I do is I take this phi okay, and I feed it back here with a positive sign. So, I am adding phi to something so that I get k2 psi and so the something to which I have to add phi to get k2 psi is k2 psi minus phi. And now, if I think of this nonlinearity in the box, which is this nonlinearity with this gain and this feedback, then this nonlinearity has as its input k2 psi minus phi and it has as its output phi. Okay? And therefore, this nonlinearity by this equation or this equation is therefore a passive nonlinearity. Okay, so the, uh, the the transformation that I do for uh, something in the zero k two sector is in this way, and when I do the transformation in this way, I get this new nonlinearity, which has the original nonlinearity as psi as the input and phi as the output. The new nonlinearity continues to have this phi as the output but it has k2 psi minus phi as the input. Okay. Now, uh, if we are now looking at uh, the feedback structure where uh, you have a plant G s and you have this nonlinearity and this nonlinearity is in the 0 k 2 sector. and we are looking at this feedback connection between the linear plant and this nonlinearity. We modify this nonlinearity to that new thing. So, the new the new nonlinearity is obtained in this way. You, you have a gain here k 2 inverse and whatever is the output you feedback a unity feedback uh, with a positive sign. Okay. So, that what you have here is really k 2 psi minus phi and the output remains the same phi. Okay. So, here you have psi phi and uh, this is u the input of the linear plant and the output y. So, let me call this new plant that I have here which would be a modified version of this plant. Let me call that G 2 s. Okay. So, the G 2 s has as its input the same as the input of G s, but it has as its output this k 2 psi minus phi. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let me instead of calling this u, let me just call this minus phi because this u is equal to minus phi and here y is equal to psi. And here what I should have is k 2 psi minus phi. Therefore, the new plant that you get there g 2 is output by input. So, it is k 2 psi minus phi divided by minus phi. From here you know that g is psi divided by minus phi. So, if you now evaluate this, this turns out to be k 2 times g this transfer function plus 1. Okay. So, now if you had a linear system with this nonlinearity in the 0 k 2 sector and you look at this closed loop system, this is exactly the same as looking at this modified nonlinearity along with this plant g 2 s, but this g 2 s is really k 2 times g plus 1. Of course, how do we realize k 2 times g plus 1? If you had the original g, you can put a gain of k 2 in series with it okay? and this plus 1 you can get 
by having a unity feed forward. So, G2S is really this net transfer function. So, uh, if you see just like in the last case, you have some sort of a symmetry because in the nonlinearity, you are putting this K2 inverse and then you are having this feedback which is a positive feedback and therefore, GS will also get modified, but this time the gain that you have in series with GS is going to be positive K2. Uh, I mean it is going to be K2 whereas, with the nonlinearity you had K2 inverse and here in this loop in this portion in the nonlinear portion this was a feedback. So, out here it is a feed forward. If you recall in the K1 infinity sector we had used a feed forward in the uh, nonlinearity as a result of which you had a feedback in the in the linear plan. Here in the nonlinearity, you are using a feedback, therefore, in the linear part you will have a feed forward. Okay. Now, this kind of transformations go under the name of loop transformations. Okay. Now, by doing this loop transformation, you have got a new nonlinearity here, and this nonlinearity is passive. This whole thing that I am marking, this whole nonlinearity is passive. Therefore, this G2S, this modified linear plant, if this modified linear plant is strictly positive real and it is uh, stable, then the original plant along with this nonlinearity, uh, of course, if this is strictly positive real and uh, is stable, then this resulting feedback system is going to be asymptotically stable and that is the same as saying that this particular system is asymptotically stable. Okay? So, uh, therefore, uh, from this what we can conclude is uh, if you have a nonlinearity and you have a linear plant G s and you are looking at this uh, feedback structure and if the nonlinearity lies in the 0 k 2 sector, then this resulting system is asymptotically stable. if k 2 times g plus 1 this transfer function which is a modified transfer function that g s becomes because you have modified nonlinearity these two are equivalent and the modified g is k 2 g plus 1 this is positive real and stable. Uh, so, what we are really doing is when we are looking at nonlinearities which are in sectors which are really in some sense subsets of the earlier earlier situation means uh, initially the passive theorem uh, passive lemma and so on were proved for nonlinearities in the 0 infinity sector. Now, we are looking at something in the 0 k 2 sector where k 2 is strictly smaller than infinity. Then uh, one would expect more transfer functions to, uh, to be interconnected to this nonlinearity resulting in, um, in something which is uh, asymptotically stable. Of course, if you have a nonlinearity in the 0 k 2 sector, you see this, this is true that all the nonlinearities in the 0 k 2 sector, this is a subset of the nonlinearities in the 0 infinity sector. So, of course, if you take a plant here which is positive real and stable, then the resulting system is anyway going to be asymptotically stable. But what this result tells you is that you need not necessarily take G s which is uh, strictly positive real and stable but you could take a g s such that k 2 times g s plus 1 
this resulting transfer function is positive real and stable. Okay. So, we could have a g which is not positive real or stable and you could have k 2 g plus 1 resulting in something which is positive real and stable. And if that is true, then that g along with the original nonlinearity that will again result in a system which is asymptotically stable. Now, um, I had uh, I had used some sort of uh, uh, quadratic forms. So, let me just revisit these quadratic forms and uh, there are um, yeah, I mean uh, depending on the tastes of people, uh, there are the new additional definitions given to many of these uh, systems. So, um, when we consider the nonlinearity in the k 1 infinity sector, okay, when we had looked at a nonlinearity in the k 1 infinity sector, what what this means is the output of the nonlinearity divided by the input lies between infinity and k 1. Okay. And then this I could rewrite as uh, phi minus k 1 psi transpose psi being greater than equal to 0. So, this this inequality that uh, I have here uh, uh, of the of a nonlinearity in this class, I could write it in this way, and this then I could rewrite in this particular way. And then uh, when I rewrite it in this way, I could think of so the original the original nonlinearity was there with input psi and output phi. So I retain the input as it is but the output I modify to phi tilde and so I look at it this way where phi tilde is given as the original phi minus k 1 psi and then this new modified nonlinearity is passive. Uh, similarly, when you take a nonlinearity in the 0 k 2 sector, then the inequalities similar to this, the inequalities that you would get is the output by the input is less than k 2 and it is greater than 0. And in this particular case, what I did was uh, I kept the output the same. So, and I wrote this inequality in a quadratic form. And so, the quadratic form that I wrote was phi and multiplying uh, uh, phi multiplied k 2 psi minus phi and this is greater than equal to 0. And this k 2 psi minus phi, I defined that as the new input. So, I kept the output the same, but I modified the input and so psi transpose phi greater than equal to 0, where psi tilde was given by k 2 psi minus phi. Okay. So, what I am really doing is I take a nonlinearity in the sector, there are these inequalities which are satisfied, but that is equivalent to saying that it is this particular quadratic form that is satisfied. And if this quadratic form is satisfied and I think of a new nonlinearity which has phi minus k 1 psi as the, uh, as the new output, I keep the input the same, I change the output. Then this new nonlinearity will actually be this non new nonlinearity would actually be in the 0 infinity sector. Similarly, if I take something in the 0 k 2 sector, I this is one way to define it, but I am redefining this in form in the quadratic form. And if I redefine this in the quadratic form, I think of this here as the new input. So, I keep the output the same, I change the input into this new input and then the resulting system is again in the 0 infinity sector. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this case, nonlinearity in this case, then what we are doing is we have kept the input the same, but we have modified the output. Okay. On the other hand, if you look at a nonlinearity in this sector, 
we have kept the output the same and we have modified the input. Now, the way we modify the output in this particular case is we give a feed forward the original plant we give a feed forward. Okay. So, such systems are also sometimes called input feed forward passive. And similarly, these systems what we did was we kept the output the same, but we gave a feedback from the output okay. and therefore, these are called output feedback passive. Okay. Now, these are all um, uh, definitions, but uh, the important thing to realize is that whenever you have um, some nonlinearity in some sector like K 1 infinity, you can convert it using this, this quadratic form into something which is passive. And similarly, if you have uh, some nonlinearity in the 0 K 2 sector, then uh, by modifying the input. I mean, this is the quadratic form that it satisfies, and so if you modify the input, then the new nonlinearity that you create is in the zero infinity sector. And once things are in the zero infinity sector, then you know that if you if you put a positive real stable plant in a feedback loop with this such a nonlinearity, you get asymptotic stability. So whatever was the linear plant that you connected that will undergo a transformation to be a new linear plant which you associate with this particular nonlinearity and that new uh, um, linear plant should now be positive real and uh, uh, should be positive real and stable and similarly in this case. Okay. Now, of course, uh, we could also we could also look at uh, a nonlinearity which is in a bound uh, uh, you know k 1 k 2 sector. So, one could look at m some nonlinearity in the k 1 k 2 sector. Okay. So, what do we mean by that? This is the input, this is the output and let us assume this has slope k 1 and you have another line which has slope k 2 and what we are saying is that we have a nonlinearity which lies in the k 1 k 2 sector. Okay. Now, for a nonlinearity that lies in the k 1 k 2 sector, we can again write some sort of a quadratic form, but um, and then use that quadratic form to convert this k 1 k 2 sector into the 0 infinity sector that means passive. Okay. Now, one way to go about doing this is uh, what one could do is we could convert this k 1 k 2 into a 0 k sector. Okay. And uh, how does one convert this into a 0 k sector? Well, you have this nonlinearity with input psi and output phi. Okay. And now, uh, if you think of uh, the input as this psi, the output is this uh, this particular phi. Okay. What one does is we modify the input to the new input psi tilde, which is given by. No, sorry. Uh, what we do is, for the same for the same psi, you have a new output phi tilde, which is given by the old phi minus k 1 psi. Okay. How to do it here? Well, what we are doing is the new, so so this is the phi tilde. Now, what can we say about this new what can we say about this new uh, new nonlinearity? That means this nonlinearity which is there in the box. Well, what we can say is that this new nonlinearity 
whose output is phi tilde and the input is psi, this new nonlinearity uh, belongs to the 0 k sector, where k is k 2 minus k 1. Now, it should be clear why this is k 2 minus k 1, uh, because you see we are talking about nonlinearity in the sector. So, one of the worst cases would be, uh, I mean, we could really think of the nonlinearity as a linearity, which is output is k 2 times the input. Now, when we put this transformation, then the output becomes k 2 times psi minus k 1 times psi, which is k times psi. And so, what we have effectively done is we have rotated this round. And so, the new nonlinearity that you get is psi is the input, phi tilde is the output and you will have slope k which is k 2 minus k 1 and the nonlinearity now will lie like that. Okay? Now, once you have something in the 0 k sector, we can use this particular thing to convert it now into something in the 0 infinity sector. Okay, so, what, what do we do? Well, to the nonlinearity, you put k inverse here and then whatever is the output, you feed it back. Yeah and uh, you feed it back with uh, with a positive sign i believe be sure yeah okay and uh, now the phi tilde but now we have uh, modified the input also and it has become psi tilde okay now this new nonlinearity with psi tilde and phi tilde is in fact in the zero infinity sector all right so um, Okay, so here are some transformations that are going around. You have a GS and you have this nonlinearity. Okay, and this nonlinearity is in the K1, K2 sector. So you do the first round of transformations, and so you get this new nonlinearity. So, the new nonlinearity you get is the old nonlinearity uh, with a gain of k1 put here. So, this is the new nonlinearity. Instead of this, we have put this additional thing, and uh, as a result, this gs gets modified. And how does gs get modified? Well, the GS gets modified by the feedback. Okay. So now this is equal to this, where you have modified the nonlinearity and you have modified the plant. Okay. This nonlinearity, which is there in this dotted box that I am talking about. If I call that nonlinearity NL1, this NL1 belongs to the 0 k sector where k is equal to k2 minus k1. Now, this is further modified now in the following way. So, you have nonlinearity, you have this k1. Okay. So, this is a nonlinearity and now you put in k inverse here and you take a positive feedback and this new nonlinearity that one is having, let me call this new nonlinearity N L 2, this belongs to the 0 infinity sector. And of course, when you do this, you have to do the corresponding change in the transfer function and uh, the change would be, so you have the linear plant, you had the feedback, 
okay. and then you do exactly this, but here you multiply by k and then you feed forward unity feed forward and this is the resulting linear plant that you have. So, this is equal to this is equal to this. So, if G s with this nonlinearity in the k 1 k 2 sector is to be stable, then this linear plant with this nonlinearity, this must be asymptotically stable. Okay. But what is this? This one could get from this by the transformations that it has to go through. So, if I call this linear plant G 1, then I know G 1 is equal to g upon 1 plus k 1 g and then this g 1 gets converted to this one. So, if I call this linear plant g 2, so g 2 I know is k times g 1 plus 1. So, substituting g 1, this is the same as k times g upon 1 plus k 1 g plus 1 this is the same as 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g. So, if 1 is given a nonlinearity in the k 1 k 2 sector and we are asked to find out all the linear plants which when interconnected with this nonlinearity gives rise to a system which is asymptotically stable then we could do a loop transformation on this k 1 k 2 and convert it into a nonlinearity in the 0 k sector and that is this thing. But what that would mean is this g will get modified to this g 1 which is g upon 1 plus k 1 g and then something in the 0 k sector you can convert it into something in the 0 infinity sector that means you can make this nonlinearity convert this nonlinearity into a passive nonlinearity by this additional uh, the additional thing that you do here some output feedback. Now, once you do this the linear plant will also be have uh, will also have to be modified accordingly and when the linear plant is modified accordingly then uh, this linear plant is modified to this linear plant, but that is saying that this linear plant G 2 is k times G 1 plus 1, but then g 1 itself was dependent on g. So, when you put all of them together you get 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g. Now, um, so theoretically if you given this nonlinearity in k 1 k 2 sector for any given plant g you could calculate 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g and check whether this plant is positive real and if it is positive real then the original system is asymptotically stable. Okay. So, this transformation that we have, uh, this goes under, I mean this is a theorem on its own and uh, it uh, goes under the name of the circle criterion. Okay. So, so let us find out what the circle criterion is all about. Okay. So, what we had said that if you have a nonlinearity in the k 1 k 2 sector and you have a linear plant connected to the nonlinearity. So, linear plant G linear connected in feedback with nonlinearity n l is asymptotically stable if ok. So, this is what we had shown the last time 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g is positive real and stable. Okay. So, given a g what one could do is one could calculate this 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g and then check whether this transfer function is positive real. But um, 
you know, checking for positive realness, one way to check for positive realness is by using the Nyquist criterion. Now, is there a way to check whether 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g is positive real, but we still want to use the Nyquist plot of the original g. Now, it turns out that, that uh, this is possible. Okay? And uh, this um, this way of predicting whether 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g is positive real and stable by using the Nyquist plot of g, this is what circle criterion is. Okay? So, um, so, we will look at this transfer function and we will use the uh, Nyquist plot of g and try to say whether this transfer function is positive real and stable. Okay? So, this is what we do. So, for that let us look at the complex plane. Okay. So, we are given the Nyquist plot of G of S. So, the Nyquist plot of G of S essentially means that uh, so, maybe we have something like that. So, this is g j omega. So, at various omegas we have uh, evaluated g s and we plotted that that is the Nyquist plot. So, let us take some particular point here. So, this is let us say g at j omega naught. Okay? Now, we are interested in finding something out about this transfer function which is 1 upon k 2 g s upon 1 plus k 1 g s. So, let us just look at the denominator. So, this denominator I could uh, pull k 1 out and uh, this is the same as 1 upon k 1 plus g s. Now, if I am going to evaluate this at omega naught, well, this vector here is g j omega naught, and uh, if I if this point here is minus one by k one, then this vector is minus 1 by k 1 and therefore, this vector here is this vector here is g j omega naught minus minus 1 upon k 1 which means this is really g of j omega naught plus 1 by k 1. So, whatever is in the denominator is obtained by looking at this particular vector. Now, in the same way one could also look at the numerator and for the numerator if one pulls out k 2 you have 1 by k 2 plus g s and so, g j omega naught is the same and 1 by k 2 will be again a point here minus 1 by k 2 will be a point here in the negative axis because we are assuming this k 1 and k 2 are both positive and of course, k 2 was a larger number than k 1 and so, 1 by k 2 would be a smaller smaller thing and so, let us say uh, no sorry k 2 is larger so, 1 by k 2 is going to be smaller. So, this is minus 1 by k 2 okay. and so, you will have a similar vector here. Okay. So, now if we wanted to evaluate this at j omega naught, what we are really evaluating is 
this vector, the magnitude of this vector in the denominator and the magnitude of this other vector 1 upon k 2 with plus g j omega naught in the numerator. And of course, because I have pulled out this k 1 and k 2, this will be k 2 by k 1. So, the magnitude of this, magnitude of this and this. But what we wanted to know was this transfer function is positive real, but what would that would mean is that the resulting Nyquist plot should have an angle which lies between plus 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. But this angle of this transfer function is essentially the angle of this which let me call it alpha and the angle of this let me call it beta. So, this angle is alpha. So, this is alpha here and this angle is beta. And so, for this transfer function 1 upon k 2 g up 1 upon k 1 g, the angle of this particular transfer function is really equal to alpha minus b. Now, if this transfer function were to stand for something which is positive real, then this angle alpha minus beta must be less than equal to. Okay. So, the magnitudes will give us a magnitude and this angle must lie between plus 90 and minus 90 or plus pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 if you are thinking of this in radians. So, this must be less than equal to pi by 2 and greater than equal to minus pi by 2. Yeah. So, now what that means is if you take any point then uh, if that point is to be a point on the on the on the Nyquist plot of G s, then to know the angle corresponding to that point, we draw these lines from minus 1 by k 2 and minus 1 by k 1 and look at the angles. So, you have alpha and beta and if the difference between these two angles alpha minus beta lies in this range, then when you do the transformation then the resulting point is going to lie in the right half plane. So, everything essentially depends on these two points minus 1 by k 2 and minus 1 by k 1. And so, let us now uh, look at how those two points get related. So, so let this point be minus 1 by k 2 and let this point be minus 1 by k 1. Okay. So, uh, if we are interested in let us say some point here, then what one does is we look at this vector and we look at this vector, look at this angle alpha, look at this angle beta and we are saying that alpha minus beta should be less than equal to pi by 2 and should be greater than or equal to minus pi by 2. And this guarantees if alpha minus beta is in this range, then it guarantees that this point z. So, suppose I call this point z, then it guarantees that 1 plus k 2 z upon 1 plus k 1 z, the point to which z will map under this bilinear transformation lies in the right half plane. Okay. So, all the points z such that alpha minus beta is in this range are permissible points where the Nyquist plot of the original plant G s could exist. But now, how do we find all those points? where alpha minus beta satisfies this inequality. Now, if you recall high school geometry, then you, you might remember that if you have a circle, okay, 
this might not really look like a circle, but let's assume this is a circle. This is a circle whose diameter is this distance between minus 1 by k 1 and minus 1 by k 2. And if you take any point and if you take any point on the circle and you look at these two lines, okay, then in high school you would have learned that the angle subtended by these two, this angle here is pi by 2. Okay. Now, if this angle is pi by 2, then what can we say about this particular angle alpha minus this particular angle beta? Well, we know beta plus this angle, if I call this angle delta, we know beta plus delta is equal to pi by 2, but we also know alpha plus delta is equal to pi. So, if you subtract the second one from the first one, you get alpha minus beta is precisely equal to pi by 2. So, this is something that we would have learnt in our high school um, geometry that if you draw this circle, then any point on the circle if you subtend, it subtends an angle 90 degrees. As a result, this quantity alpha minus beta for any point on this circle is going to be precisely pi by 2. So, then it turns out that if you take any point outside the circle, then the angle will be less than or the modulus of the angle, the modulus of the angle would be less than pi by 2. And if you take any point inside the circle, then the angle that is going to get subtended, its modulus is going to be greater than pi by 2. So, this is really the circle criterion. So, what it says is that uh, for, okay, so given G, if uh, the Nyquist plot of G so, given G, so suppose you want to find something out about this transfer function 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g given G, then from one uh, from the information about k 1 and k 2, you can plot these two points minus k uh, 1 by k 1 minus 1 by k 2 and you can look at the circle and if the Nyquist plot of G does not enter the circle then the Nyquist plot of this transformed transfer function is going to lie completely in the right half plane and that is the circle criterion. Okay. Now, this uh, sort of throws up a lot of very interesting things which uh, one would uh, like to talk about. So, I would uh, talk about what uh, are the various kinds of interpretation that you can get with the circle criterion in my next lecture.